I had no intention of coming to Hong Kong. I, I didn't even know where it was. I told this to a friend of mine once. I said I came out uh, on a short-time job, and he said, well, when will you be finished? Well, one of the things I've um, um, sort of formulated was that uh, I could have never, uh, I call it parachuted, into Hong Kong. In other words, you know, just jumped in and started working. Um, I was very, very lucky because I was working for a fairly large operation that was well connected, that um, supported me, uh, and um, and because of the the network that they had already, uh, that made it easier for me. So I was eased into working in Hong Kong. Early on, um, working for the Asia magazine, um, I, um, I, I saw uh, Asia as being separate, as having um, its own traditions, um, and that's what I played with, with contrasting uh, European, if you like, and Asian culture. One of my teachers uh, at Yale said, um, uh, show them something they know and show them something they don't know. And that's essentially my methodology. So, uh, you know, I'll have um, half of a, a European face and half of a Chinese face. Uh, and uh, you know, do do things uh, contrasting the cultures. Uh, that's another very common expression: uh, compare and contrast. I'm a Jew, and Jews, by uh, definition, have to be cross-cultural. You know, because we lost our uh, our homeland for two thousand years, so we uh, we traveled. Uh, I mean, in the case of my family, we were in uh, uh, Spain uh, up until um, 1492. Uh, we lived in Toledo. The 1967 uh, riots, if you like, uh, um, changed things and, and made me more identified with the government um, because, you know, you, you saw that the um, the people who were trying to overthrow the uh, the administration um, um, weren't particularly pleasant, uh, and they had no sense of humor. Uh, and um, at, at at that time, uh, you know, the uh, the old Bank of China was was really um, a communist haven, and they. Um, protected their, their rooftop with uh, barbed wire and, and even bamboo sticks and things like that so no helicopters could land. Uh, and they, they put big loudspeakers in to broadcast uh, um, propaganda and also have very uh, threatening things about the police. They would say, uh, 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 Chief Inspector Wang, we know who you are and we're going to get you. And uh, right across the street from them at that time was the government information services, uh, a long, low building. And they put up their own loudspeaker and at the top volume they played Cantonese opera. It was very earnest, um, very uh, 
very serious. I, I remember the, uh, the morning after a, a particularly bad uh, episode uh, in Tiananmen. Uh, on a Saturday, the next morning, I was uh, at the Hong Kong Club and somebody said, well, uh, that's it, we, we won't be sitting here in a year's time. You know, meaning that uh, China would take over, and that was it. I had a a client uh, at that time called the I Club, which was uh, a, um, a a very sophisticated place that had uh, beautiful um, uh, decoration, and um, it, w it was was very well run. Uh, it had. Uh, original Andy Warhols on the wall, original uh, Corbusier furniture, you know, uh, it was all wonderfully done. And they had an opening party. And uh, as it happened, uh, earlier that day, uh, the, the announcement came from Beijing about uh, the, um, you know, the fact that uh, Hong Kong would be handed over. And, uh, you know, that was the end of the iClub. I mean, they, they tried to keep going, but the idea was you, you would pay a, a, a year's subscription, which was, you know, a, a reasonably high amount. Uh, and people weren't willing to commit to that. There was a bit of uh, anxiousness about it, and uh, um, even I, uh, you know, thought, well, if, if I have to leave, where do I go? And uh, uh, at the time, I thought, well, I, maybe I'll go to Kuala Lumpur in, in Malaysia. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm terribly grateful that <laughs> I, I didn't because, uh, you know, Hong Kong has still um, uh, certainly outstripped Malaysia. I remember people were... Uh, with with the SARS, uh, the, the the bird flu, it was uh, it was also called. People were walking around with white masks. Uh, uh, you were advised not to shake hands, to um, uh, do the you know the the Chinese handshake, uh, so that you you wouldn't pass things. Um, at, at that time, uh, the idea of having a set of chopsticks for serving not for eating, came in, you know, because that was also unhygienic. Otherwise, everybody would serve themselves from the, the main dish. Things were quiet, uh, and uh, uh, this, this couple who, you know, had lived here for a long time said, you know, is, isn't this um, terrible? Oh, and uh, movie houses had maybe a half a dozen people <laughs> for the showings. Uh, and, and I said to them, uh, you're going to miss these days. Uh, and and uh, I, I meant it uh, because I, I could feel that this kind of, uh, you know, relaxing, <laughs> if you like, uh, was, um, was something that uh, I, I feel nostalgic for. All the women wore Chang Sons. And, uh, you know, that, that was nice. And that changed in 1967. Um, that was, uh, I don't think it was the result, uh, it was serendipity. It wasn't just the, uh, the, um, the uh, 67 riots, uh, but it, it, was, um, uh, it, it was coming in from the West where uh, you saw a lot of Western dresses and, and jeans and uh, it was uh, it was a little bit the hippie movement. It was uh, uh, a sense also uh, Hong Kong was starting to produce its own fashions. So um, uh, sadly for for men certainly, <laughs> the the, the Chang Sam you know became an object of uh, uh, being a costume rather than a, a, a daily. Dress. It was the gateway to uh, to China. Uh, it no longer is. And um, uh, recently, I've I've been to uh, Seoul in Korea, in Shanghai, in uh, Shenzhen, and in uh, Singapore. 
and those uh, four cities have in common that they uh, they begin with S, and um, they have all, <clears throat> in many ways, overtaken uh, Hong Kong. The symbol of what's wrong with Hong Kong is Disneyland. I mean, it's an insult to Hong Kong, to Chinese civilization, to have people come here for Mickey Mouse or Cinderella. Uh, you know, come on. I mean, you know, it should be, it should be something that, that's Hong Kong. In looking at, uh, at things that I've done uh, with, uh, you know, the perspective of, of the time, uh, I'm very pleasantly surprised at uh, how they've held up, uh, how, how uh, I do feel proud, um, uh, objectively. You know, not, not, well, I did that, so it's good. But, you know, that, uh, that stands the test of time. People like to introduce people by something, you know, and uh, in my case, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> and it's almost as though they're reading from a script. Uh, he uh, designed the uh, HSBC logo that you see everywhere, and, uh, Probably uh, many of the banknotes in your in your pocket, and uh, if there's one thing that Hong Kong respects, it's money. They uh, very often they don't even know which b series of banknotes I've done, but you know if, it, if it's money, then well, you know he must be all right. It's a wonderful. Uh, job to, to get because uh, very often uh, the, the work of designing uh, banknotes is done by um, uh, people who work for the printers. For the, uh, they're called the originators, the people who make the, uh, the plates and, and all of that. And uh, uh, so for an outsider to do this is, uh, is a, an enormous privilege. The, um, the animals, uh, there are five of them, uh, all mythological, are based on um, uh, Chinese mythology, and they um, they give a certain um, uh, presence. Uh, it, it's obviously not humanity. Uh, in in other countries, you have uh, kings or. Uh, poets or, or whatever, you know, uh, cultural heroes. Um, that's not the tradition in Hong Kong. Um, so, uh, I, but I, you know, instead of having a building or something, I wanted to, uh, if you can't have a, a person's picture, you can have an animal that's looking at you that has a personality. I was called by the, uh, at that time, Austrian consul and um, he uh, asked, uh, is it okay if I come to your office? And I, I'd met him, of course, and I said, yes, so, you know. And uh, he came here, uh, and uh, he said uh, that uh, we are uh, offering citizenship to uh, Austrians who had to leave. Uh, would you... Uh, would you like to be repatriated? And I said, of course, but um, can I keep my American passport? He said, yes, uh, you can have a dual nationality. And um, I took that as an apology, which it was, of course. And um, it, you know, just uh, uh, made me feel good. Uh, you know, it was like, uh, you know, we we're back, uh, back to normal. Um, I, uh, I kept that situation with the two passports for a while, but then a bit later I, I, I just felt I didn't need uh, or want uh, the American passport, so I, I gave it up. I don't know that I could go back full time. Um, my uh, blood has gotten thin in the tropics, and uh, I don't know that I could 
do an Austrian winter or a Viennese winter. Um, but uh, I, uh, I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, later this year I'll be visiting Vienna and I'll, I'll, I'll smell around a bit uh, and maybe, maybe do something uh, in the summer there, which, uh, where it's usually uh, a little bit nicer than it is here. Um, and then we'll see. Uh, but um, I'm not uh, I'm not ready to leave Hong Kong yet. But I I wouldn't mind um, you know just having a, another uh, pied à terre. <laughs>